welcome to the election party party. In case you weren't already annoyed by all the commercials when you're trying to watch YouTube videos of other people playing Minecraft, we're going to talk about the election in class too. Shabuya! Now as we talked about last week, the United States doesn't have a straight up democracy. Like we don't just all go to the polls and vote for president and then whoever gets the most votes wins. That's not how it works. And some people look at the way that we vote for president in the United States as this really quirky American way of doing democracy. You know, it's just like a really strange American tradition like flannel and Paul Bunyan hats. But let me tell you, like Paul Bunyan himself, the way that we vote for president in America is very on purpose and it's pretty cool. Did you catch that that was an opinion? An opinion that's true, but an opinion nonetheless. So in the United States, when a person wants to run for president, it's important to know some of the qualifications that you have to have. You have to be 35 years old. You have to be a natural born citizen of the United States. You have to have lived in the United States for a certain number of years. You can't just like, you know, go live in Australia for 20 years and then move back and be like, yeah, I think I'll run for president. <laughs> not gonna happen. But there's also some like in between the lines, not official rules that like you have to do this to become president of the United States, but there are some things that really help. Number one would probably be access to large amounts of cash. Like having your own cash would be a really good thing. But having access to cash is also a good thing. And that's where political parties come into play. In the United States, we right now have a two party system. Now this is not written into the constitution. This is not something that many of our founding fathers and mothers even wanted. Some of them were like, do not form political parties. It's a really bad idea. I know Washington said political parties are a bad idea, but I gotta be honest, that kind of makes me want to start one. But that's the way that it is. We have two main political parties in the United States and they are Republicans and Democrats, which you probably knew already. Well, to run for president, you're probably going to have to identify with one of those two parties. Winning the presidency in the United States as a third party candidate, not very likely. Now, the first thing that you have to do then is win that party's nomination. Well, that's a whole process in and of itself. We call that the primary caucus process. So in the United States, each state has a primary election or a caucus. In a primary, people go to the polls and they just vote for whoever they think the candidate should be for their party. So they're not even voting for president yet. They're voting for who they think we should vote for. In a caucus, you're also deciding who you think should run for president, but that's a much more democratic situation. So in a caucus, people go to a room in a town, like all the Republicans in Holly go to the choir room and all of the Democrats go to the media center. And then as a group, they talk and say, okay, this is who we think the candidate should be. Who do you think the candidate should be? There's usually, you know, six to 12 people who are saying, I want to be the Republican or I want to be the Democrat. So in townships all across the state, that would happen. People get together, Republicans and Democrats, they get together, they get together in Bagley, they get together in St. Paul, they get together in Minneapolis, and they all talk about who they think the candidate for their party should be. And at the end of that day, the state of Minnesota as a whole would say of the candidates who are running for Republican, this is who Minnesotan Republicans think should be on the ballot. Of the candidates running for the Democratic position to be on the ballot for Democrats, this is who Democrats in the state of Minnesota think should be on the ballot. Well, that happens over and over and over from state to state. And there's a, there's a really big event that we call Super Tuesday, where a lot of states do their primary or caucus on the same day. And over that process, then we start to have people drop out of the race, right? They're not doing well. Uh, maybe through this process, it like comes out of the closet that there's a, a picture of them snorting crack off of a WWF's six pack in a super eight conference room. I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking that kind of stuff happens. Well then, you know, they're probably going to drop out, but they might not. So that whole primary caucus process is supposed to bring about the best, most shining characters who could be on the ballot 
for that political party. It isn't until after that process that we start the next stage of the presidential election. In the next stage of the presidential election, the Democrat and the Republican, and you know, all the other people who are running who really don't get any airtime, which is too bad, but the Republican and the Democrat, then they start to run against each other. And this is when we have debates. This is when we have the political ads that are all over. This is when we have people unfriending each other on social media and uh, families deciding maybe we won't have like actual in-person Thanksgiving this year. This process also takes an incredible amount of money. So there's lots of fundraising, sign buying that you put in the front yard, lots of speeches and handshaking, kissing babies, campaigning. At the end of that, we have the election. Yeah? Hello? I'm making a video. Do you want to be in it? Love you. This is where we start to get very excited. Some people put money on this. I don't know if that's legal. Maybe I should edit that out. A candidate in the United States does not win the presidency by winning a majority vote, by winning popular opinion. A candidate in the United States wins the presidency by winning the electoral college. Electoral college. In the Electoral College, each state is worth points, and it shouldn't surprise you that the great state of Minnesota is worth a perfect 10. Dang, Minnesota? If a candidate wins that state, even if they win that state by one point, they get all of the electoral votes. Now, each state is worth points based on that state's population. So the first candidate to 270 points wins the electoral college they become president so this is where it gets kind of kind of hooky to some people i don't is hooky a word what's hooky i don't think i've ever said that before in my life kooky kooky i meant kooky this is where it gets kind of kooky wrap your head around this a candidate can win the electoral college but lose the popular vote and in the last 20 years this has happened twice it happened in the 2016 presidential election where donald trump won the electoral college but hillary clinton won the popular vote it happened in the year 2000 with george w bush who was running against al gore and it's pretty easy to see why if a candidate wins the state of california for example and they, but they only win it by one point well, California is worth a lot of electoral points. So if they win that by one vote, they get all those electoral points. But the other candidate could have gotten this many votes from California. Now there's a couple different ways to look at this. In the 2016 election, for example, if we look at the states and the counties where people voted and how they voted, if you look at the electoral college, it looks like this. And it's like, okay, there's a lot of red on that map. So it's easy to see why Donald Trump won because that's how the electoral college works. One of the problems that some people have with that is it kind of makes it look like land can vote because if one person lives in all of Northern Montana, let's just say, or, you know, Western South Dakota, <laughs> which is probably more likely, then that whole area would show up as red even though one person voted there. So it can be depending on the map, and it's one of those things, it's kind of like the Bible and science, that people are going to find the map and find the data that supports whatever they're trying to say. Because if you look at it just by population, then the map looks like this. So there are people who call this system kooky, who are like, you know, this is outdated, it's antiquated, I don't know what they were thinking when they came up with it, but uh, maybe we could try again or do something different. But here's the thing, it was very much on purpose. Now some of those purposes, mm, you know, our founding fathers and mothers didn't really think that the average person would be very good at voting, which is probably why Winston Churchill said this. And maybe you've had those five minute conversations with some of those people. But like much of American democracy, there are buffers put in place between the people and the execution of decisions, just like checks and balances. The legislative branch doesn't just write a law and pass it. 
There are a lot of steps that an idea has to go through to actually become a law. And there's a lot of checks and balances that go into that process. And it might seem weird and slow and, and really messy, but like we've been talking about democracy since the beginning of the year, when it's done well, it is messy. You know where things happen very quickly? In a dictatorship. You know where there's a lot of agreement about a decision? in a totalitarian government. You know what I'm saying? I mean, no, it's not perfect. But the founding fathers and mothers wanted to make it difficult to get things done, kind of. They wanted to put a buffer in between movements of the people, of all of the people, and the final execution of a decision. And that's why we have things like the primary caucus process. That's why we have things like the electoral college. That's why we have things like the three branches of government and they each have special powers and they balance each other out and they check on each other. It's supposed to be a cumbersome process. And while that can be frustrating to watch, it was definitely done on purpose. But out of the goodness of my heart, I have created a little musical snack in review for you. Over me, over me, over me now. 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 Over me, over me, over me now.